Dave Monk, your Prairie Monk, WAFT Champagne, 90.1 on your FM dial. And Dave on the board. This is Sunday, May the 20th. 2018, and this is the Prairie Monk Program, WEFT's weekly look at nature and conservancy and nature conservancy and um, rails, trails, greenways, and I could not help but notice walking, coming in today that uh, we need to talk a little bit about the Pocket Prairie. So, yes. So you have an announcement you just pulled off the wall. You might like to say something about Sure, and I'll probably mention this again at the end. Emma Song's concerts, spring concerts, are this weekend. This is Nevertheless She. Every perform, every um, piece that they're doing this weekend is was written by a woman. In fact, one of the pieces was written by Megan Smith, a former conductor of Emma Song. So the concert today will be at 4 o'clock this afternoon. It is at the McKinley Presbyterian Church, which is at... Fifth and John Street. Um, they do request a donation, but they will not turn anybody away for not having the money to to make any kind of a donation. Um, it's and, uh, yeah. a very interesting uh, concert. Always, I love going. I always go to one of the concerts every single semester that they have these. So I'll mention it again at the end as a reminder. So uh, yes, as David mentioned already, <laughs> Pocket Prairie. It's interesting. Uh, we're working with. Uh, the uh, poor people, uh, this is pour your own beer, and it's, uh, uh, y- y- you uh, are gonna have a brewery there in the building next to our Pocket Prairie, in next to across the road from Webb's. Uh, it's uh, going to be a computerized brewery with lots of different uh, ales that you can take a, a two ounce sample, and uh, if you like it, then you can pour your own and uh, take a, uh, a glass of beer and, and walk it out onto uh, what has been the Pocket Prairie. So, we have negotiated to try and leave a little of the prairie because some of us have been there for 30 odd years and it's well established and its roots are into uh, terraces that are, are hard to, to get the plants out of. And uh, we, we, we've come to the conclusion that it's not practical to do that. Uh, so it, it will be a place for camaraderie or, and music. And so we're uh, pleased to p- that this is coming because Market Street has had uh, a varied life and this is is helpful. Uh, part of uh, uh, working on the building is that it, it uh, closes the street, which is convenient for us. I watched uh, concrete people filling in uh, a gap that had been made for utilities, and uh, I was intrigued by the people who were doing the the uh, concrete work. Uh, uh, very skilled, and uh, that was finished, and it takes time to dry, so the street is cut off while that uh, section of concrete dries. It's it's a little difficult to have concrete in a brick street, and Market Street is a brick street. You can tell it's a brick street because it has cracks in the, in the pavement, and that's because bricks move and they settle on sand, and uh, uh, that cracks the uh, asphalt that's on top. Uh, it has happened that uh, uh, historic people have more recently been putting in a concrete street just because that is, is the modus operandi at the present time. Uh, but then they put sand on top of that and then they put the bricks back. So that means that the bricks don't move as, as in the past. If you had the same cartwheel parking on the same set of bricks, then the set of bricks uh, wears down and, and you have to have manual labor to take that brick up and s- sprinkle some more, more sand underneath it, turn it over and 
so it will wear in a different manner, and that's that's the way it was. But uh, it's 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 uh, costly in terms of uh, having to deal with manual labour. Uh, these days, you work with a, a front end loader or or other equipment that will deal with taking out the bricks and replacing it with concrete. If you don't take out completely, then uh, there, there's the risk that the, the bricks will fall in, into, gradually into it, their traditional uh, matrix and the concrete won't. So you get a little bump there. And sometimes it can be a considerable bump. Uh, but that's been a perpetual problem uh, for many years in urban settings. Uh, some communities that, that want brick streets are prepared to to pay for the labor that would go to replacing the, the, the hole that you dig for utilities with bricks rather than with concrete. But concrete is much more professional and that's what's likely to happen. Uh, I, uh, Noticed that there were paving bricks coming out, so I said to the, the person that was in charge of the hole, uh, could we have those? Uh, well, they said, well, you have to do it in 30 minutes. So I stacked up a bunch of pavers, and, uh, and then the truck came, and the, the broken bricks and asphalt and other things were going into the truck. So I quickly called. Packer, or, and they said they would take them. So uh, we came back, and Packer's just up the road on Washington Street. And yeah, so the truck, instead of going to to a, a, a different dump, uh, where the pavers would probably be mixed up with a lot of junk that is too costly to dig uh, for salvage. They went to Packer, and by the time the truck was leaving, the people were already uh, lining up the bricks and noticing the Danville uh, sign that was uh, imprinted on them. They usually uh, have been killed with some, uh, some more salt than normal bricks uh, so that they won't uh, ab uh, absorb quite as much water when it rains. So, uh, Paving bricks are, are very different from uh, housing bricks that you use for building. Uh, so that meant that the, the street is blocked off, but it's a, it's a street that is used quite a bit. Uh, during the day, we had a, a film crew here, and uh, they uh, were trying to integrate with what we were trying to do, which was move a prairie. And, uh, so let's look at the prairie now. And uh, uh, we've probably moved about half of it. Uh, we have a, uh, a modest size high hole, uh, and that has allowed us to uh, creep into the prairie and dig up clumps of, of plants. The prairie often is, <coughs> is uh, designed in terms of clumps. Uh, uh, we've had a, a lot of support so far. Uh, we can use more. Uh, and we've had several people who have had the temerity to, to drive the, the backhoe <coughs> or the, the high hoe. Uh, and so let me say something about that piece of equipment. It, uh, it was delivered on Friday, and we, uh, we had other things to do to prepare the, the, the work for it. Uh, we had took out a lot of uh, hackberry plants and things that didn't belong. And uh, uh, by Saturday, we were into using it. Uh, it's uh, It's got a lot of mechanisms to it. it. It's on clee tracks. And when you have clee tracks, the way you sear something, whether it's a tank or a, or a bulldozer, you lock one cle track and the other one moves around. 
It's, it's always bothered me a little bit that that's you, how you steer this equipment because it's very rough on the, the territory underneath. If you see where a, a bobcat has been, you'll see uh, that the, the land underneath is a kind of a disturbed. Uh, to avoid that, they've made it so that if you have the clee tracks running in one direction, then the cab can move around, so you can take your backhoe around without having to move your uh, clee tracks. You don't have to turn the machine around by this method of locking one uh, set of clee tracks and moving uh, in a different direction. Uh, there are, there are uh, other um, attributes. Uh, you have a, a, a bucket, and the bucket can go up and down. It can go s sideways, uh, left and right. It, you can take the, the bucket and move it so that its point is vertical and it's going into the, the soil. Uh, you can make that cup so that you can load bricks into it. Uh, so these variables are if you don't drive a, a bobcat or a, these pieces of equipment every day, it takes you a little while, probably half an hour, to learn how it operates. And obviously, if we are uh, neophytes, uh, y you don't have the sophistication of people who use this equipment every day. They can get to within a quarter of an inch of a spot and, and, and be very accurate with it. So there's a, a, a lot of talent that goes with these pieces of equipment that we don't have, but this is quite adequate for us. And on Saturday, we, we re moved through the trees. There was a forest uh, that was a simulation of a prairie forest. And it's actually been dying because it, it has a disease called thrip. It's, a, it's an entomological thing. It's a, a, an insect that gets into roses mainly. My gardeners know it from roses, but it also gets into uh, service berries, which have been our simulated forest. Uh, it leaves cracks in the, the um, uh, stems, and uh, uh, the stems die. So uh, some of the trees are, are still alive, uh, and some of them we have been taking out. Uh, then when you do that, you have to watch where the branches of the tree goes because there's a power line that goes across there to <coughs> what used to be a, a small billboard. Uh, so you have to have clippers to make sure that you can uh, liberate the area and you have to watch overhead. And uh, you have to watch, the, there's a slope in pick a Pocket Prairie and that means you do have to keep on the high line and keep the, the weight of the, building, the uh, machine up high, it can stretch down low, but uh, you, when you do stretch it out, you have to know that there's a weight on the end of the arm, and that can uh, move the prime mover. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of little techniques about it. It's, it can be used by uh, men and women because it's hydraulic and electronic, and it's it's organization, so you don't have to be a 200-pound person to, to uh, use this machine. There are locks so that you uh, put a seat belt on. Uh, uh, there's usually a, a canopy over it that is also a, a prevention. If it rolls, then there are roll bars that mm. mean that you, you don't lose your life when the, the machine runs over, which happens. Uh, there are usually headlights, so you can work at night. There's, uh, uh, it's just a very convenient item, and we're glad to have it for the weekend. We're due to be out of there by Monday. We've still got a lot of work to do. And uh, it's, uh, we've had a lot of people over on the, the site where we're taking it to, and there are some limitations about that. It's, um, 
It's in a detention pond, and we've chosen a, a site which is fairly low. And uh, I uh, regret that a little bit because I realize that in a five-inch rainfall, that site will be covered. That's not unusual for prairie. The prairie grew very well, and the Grand Prairie of East Central Illinois was around Rantoul and Flatville, and it was swampy, and Champaign County was swampy. Uh, but it's a different sort of swamp than if you have a, 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 a roaring uh, a five inch rain. And the whole purpose of the uh, detention pond is to accumulate water and let it out slowly so it doesn't cause this uh, canyon on the way mm. through Campus Town and Urbana. Uh, it, and it, it used to be that on Green Street, you could you could row a, a boat or a canoe, and nobody's basements were effective because the, the water would flood. And so th this helps to collect various tributaries, and uh, it's referred to as the Big Dig. It's technically the Second Street Detention Pond, and it's very deep. It has a pond, a, a huge pond, and then the boneyard comes into it, and the boneyard comes down in a little stream. And uh, that's significant because the ducks especially uh, have enjoyed it, the, the um, geese also enjoy it, and uh, they are fairly active to the point that they, they eat the, the vegetation that's on the sides. Uh, it's seemingly fortunately there's a bridge across uh, and Logan or, or uh, Stoughton or one of those streets and the, that ends the pond and the, the, the boneyard runs into it and it would, most of these birds uh, ducks especially need landing space and they need to, to take off space. Uh, uh, and they, they enjoy to uh, move around in a pond and, and uh, dig for s stuff in the mud. Uh, so the, the, uh, those creatures tend to be in the pond. So we put our prairie a little north of that after the bridge, and it, well, there's a boneyard creek uh, right alongside. And that provides us with water. Uh, it, the soil is was seemingly fairly uh, fertile. Uh, it's dark and got some organic matter. It, uh, we had a choice of taking the uh, the lawn grass off of it and we could have cultivated it. It probably would have been sensible to do. But one of the things about prairie is that it likes, to, or it has gotten used to be in fairly uh, firm ground. And that's helpful to us because if the prairie is in firm ground, the, the weeds, the, the uh, local farm weeds and, and, and urban weeds, usually like a disturbed area uh, and a fertile area. And uh, so we try to avoid uh, having weeds for 10 years by having firm ground. But the ground is kind of more firm than we thought. And uh, so a little bit of cultivation would have helped. This, this is hindsight for, for us. It's, 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 we, we don't move a prairie every week, so we don't know all the parameters. But it might be that in the future we might have a, a prairie a little higher, and these plants might be transplantable. Uh, you know, three, ten years' time, uh, if they are subject to uh, flooding that is uh, too aggressive for the plants. It's not a swamp land, it's it, 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 in a flood time, it, it, the, the plant is totally inundated. 
Now, cultivar people who t take the prairie plants and develop them have changed that some. Uh, in the case of switchgrass, switchgrass is a, a grass that stays up over winter, and so it's good for pheasants, and Pheasants Forever and other organizations plant switchgrass fairly liberally. Uh, the birds can put their eggs in there, and, and uh, uh, they're protected by the, the fruiting body staying up, whereas big blue stem and Indian grass, the fruiting bodies drop. And cord grass is in a sort of damper situation. Uh, little blue stem doesn't get very high. Uh, but the cultivar people, when you take these plants and that are perennial and have a, a long flowering season with small flowers, uh, then you, you can annualize them by uh, creating a, a bigger and a better flower by breeding and one that comes to head at a certain time. So you get a show of flowers at a certain time, you might do that. You, you see uh, Echinacea, for instance, uh, the uh, local uh, purple cone flower is uh, fairly wimpy and its petals hang down. Uh, if you take that plant and breed it, you can have a perennial plant. They're both perennial, but you can have a a uh, shrub-like plant with, with lots of very purple flowers and uh, it, they flower for a, a longer period. And so you can do that. You can take 50 years of uh, perhaps 50 uh, agronomists or horticulturists to breed that. And often it's volunteer people who just get to be excited about uh, roses or what have you. and, and and spend their lifetime uh, belonging to horticultural societies and, and improving plants. Uh, so in our case, if you had uh, switchgrass, you can choose uh, s varieties of switchgrass that are now very uh, able to stand up under eight inches of water wow. uh, or eight days of water, so uh, we can do simulation with uh, some of these sorts of cultivars, but uh, basically the prairie wasn't underwater in that manner uh, for a long period of time. But, uh, so as we work with these things, you get to handle the ideas around them and know a little bit more about the genetics. Uh, somebody was just asking me, uh, do we have New Jersey tea? And well, no, the soil we have on the pocket, pocket prairie is very poor soil. It was soil that was put over a landfill in, in uh, early settlement days. Uh, that little corner and that little uh, battle ax shaped block, it's uh, probably about 30 feet wide and about 100 feet long uh, was a landfill. And you had a pillbox at the front and you paid so much and dumped your material. It wasn't going to be cars and things like that. It was in the horse-drawn era. And, and so, but it's, a, it's kind of junky soil. No, that's okay. No, we've been using it, but certain prairie species that really like a better soil uh, don't find it easy to fit into that location. Some of them are also liking a lot of sunlight, and we have buildings that uh, don't prevent the sun, but they it, they cast a shadow, and some plants, you can tell them that they lean out. Uh, the history of this site was interesting. It was... Um, two billboards about 30 feet long each and uh, they didn't meet the federal, the more recent federal uh, legalities of how, how big you can have a sign uh, close to a federal highway which is University Avenue so 
they were grandfathered in for 10 years. Grandfathered means that you can uh, go by the rule of the game that you were going by uh, for 10 years and then you have to change and the billboards were taken out and a smaller billboard went in. Uh, that left a site that gathered urban weeds and it wasn't the greatest site but we asked to put a pocket prairie in there and that was okay with uh, the owner, Dr. Young. And uh, uh, so we've had that site there for uh, over 30 years. So the plants now have uh, found their roots and the roots are in terraces. The, the Pope family that owned the billboards uh, had they do a lot of augmenting of the billboard, so it just doesn't look like a bare billboard. It has vegetation around it. And they'd put in a, a quite expensive set of three uh, terraces that could be uh, vegetated. Uh, and, and so that was a very cooperative thing to do from an urban point of view. Uh, uh, Eventually, the, the, the parking lot next door was, was fenced off and our prairie uh, was behind it, a little bit private. We, we got the, the fence to be two feet lower than it might have been. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there was a little trail that went around and it didn't go to Chester Street. It, it bent back and came to Market Street. It had w some existing trees, mainly a, uh, a uh, hackberry tree, which we're kind of reserved about because it has enough roots uh, to uh, lift a building up and down. Uh, there's also a fast-growing catalpa tree, and uh, that was handy to us because in early settlement times, uh, women especially were impressed by the prairie. They liked its flowers, they wrote poetry. If you go to the university library, you can find transcripts of, of that sort of interest in prairie. Uh, the farmer, on the other hand, was interested in the soils underneath and uh, pasture for cattle or uh, agricultural use for corn and soybeans. And so often, uh, when the last piece of prairie was being taken out, a catalpa tree was given because it has nice white blooms, it grows quickly, and it has these fantastic long pods that you can put uh, pipe cleaners into and make interesting animals. It's just so we, we have a couple of catalpa trees there. There's one that's rather young, if anyone wants a catalpa tree, there's, a, there's the opportunity. Uh, and it's doing well. Uh, so we're walking around the, the, the we're, we're looking at, this morning I'm looking at the, the, the partially demolished prairie. And there's a lot of bricks that uh, we put in as a pathway, uh, put in with scouts. And uh, they made a nice little rustic pathway. And, I was asked where did the bricks come from. Well, they were what called job lots. And, uh, uh, then what was the question of what is a job lot? Well, when you have a building and you you overestimate the number of bricks you need, then you you may have uh, some left over, and it's small enough lot that it doesn't always sell very well because it's just too few bricks. So we, we had several job lots that are out there. They have holes through them, so the water can fl flow through them. Actually, the plants can grow out of them, and uh, we're salvaging those. They're not, they're, they're not paving bricks. They're more modern bricks, and we might take those to, to uh, the Pope Prairie in Rantoul, uh, because we have a little stream, and it's kind of wet underfoot to get across it from time to time, so a little pathway would make it possible to, to have stepping stones. 
but they, we haven't we decided that for real. We, to get them there, we need someone with a trailer. If you're out there and you've got a trailer or a pickup truck, we could use it. Uh, so the, the, the uh, bricks have to come out here, and, and it's, it's helpful. The, the, the uh, more modern bricks uh, are fairly delicate, so hmm. if you run over the top of them with a, a backhoe or, or other equipment, and they're likely to break. So you, you open up a section and gradually take the, the <coughs> bucket and it's got tines on it and you move the, the bricks and lift them out. The other way is to, to put your, tuck, your bucket in and drag them and that's not quite so uh, successful for the bricks because they tend to, to, be, to break a little and you, they're mixed up with soil so in order to harvest them you have to fish them out. You know, so we've had both ways of doing things, and, and uh, there's Karen is out there at the moment uh, doing it by hand, with a, so pa taking paving bricks out in a place where we couldn't get with a, a high hole. Uh, uh, and, and those bricks are sort of bricks that a packer will sell for something like 50 cents a piece. Mm. Uh, so, and, and many people have uh, enjoyed that sort of opportunity. The, the, the cities have bought bricks often to fill in brick streets, and uh, sometimes they have some leftover. Sometimes the street is converted over to concrete. Uh, bus lines that use streets heavily will end up uh, being uh, uh, made into c a concrete or asphalt street and the bricks will come up. And PACA, the Preservation and Conservation Association, and Bob Swisher and his team has done a good job of picking up those sorts of bricks. Uh, sometimes they're mixed with uh, other items that come out of a, a dead street, and you need to, to sort the bricks out. So if the bricks are already sorted out, and sometimes they've got some uh, lime uh, so associated with them, then if they're clean, you pay a little bit more. You might pay 75 cents for a brick. But, uh, uh, so we have a, a brick. So we also have a moraine out there, uh, a simulated moraine with, with glaciated uh, rocks, and some of those are rather heavy. So we will move those too, and they will probably go to the a second Street detention pond in Prairie. And we'll have to sort out a name for it. Uh, the city's already interested in uh, some signage to explain it, and uh, we hope that, that uh, the rocks, are, uh, the glaciated rocks are, are fairly uh, valuable because by the time you got a glacier from Canada, the house size blocks, the uh, things that are very big, would drop out and drop through the ice, uh, and they're more likely to be in Canada. By the time you get to Illinois and a terminal moraine, uh, most of the rocks have fallen out. So if you want to have a four foot by three foot glaciated rock with rounded surfaces, it's going to cost you two or three hundred dollars. Because there's not many of them, and if you, you, you dig in your backyard and find one, it's worth money. Uh, <clears throat> the big dig uh, couldn't really afford that sort of glacial rock, so uh, most of the big dig is uh, uh, sedimentary rock uh, from Wisconsin, which is much different. It's not what we would have locally but it provides an atmosphere for waterfalls and for uh, uh, plants growing in between the cracks and whatnot, and it's uh, remarkably cheaper than, than a, a glaciated rock. But I think the prairie goes with the glaciation, and so 
we'll take the rock and put it in place and we'll uh, so I walked around and photographed this morning I, we had people working on the site that's uh, the uh, uh, big dig site and that was hard work and uh, we, we had two vehicles to, to take uh, items. If you take a scoop, you can gently, once you've learned to use this, this machine, you uh, face the, the uh, bucket down and then you try to scoop. And you, if you know you, your plant, you know whether it has deep roots or fibrous roots. And, and then you try to cup under that plant and then we put it in a box. Uh, the boxes come from the, the comic uh, shop just <coughs> up the road. And they have very strong double, uh, double row corrugations for comic books. And uh, so they just ideal for putting uh, uh, yeah, a one foot by one foot uh, dump of plant. When you get that scoop out, you might have a, a three feet uh, portion, so you need to cut it in pieces at the logical location uh, and uh, drop it in. If uh, you have a, box, a, a, a cardboard box underneath, you can collect and retain some of the uh, uh, soil that goes with the roots. And that's what we cut across to the big dig and uh, that gets planted in, and the boneyard runs by. Uh, it's a little creek. I watched yesterday as, as a dog uh, was enjoying it. He was he was paddling all the way along that creek, mm. uh, and and uh, uh, as we put things in, people were coming by to wonder what we're doing and why. And uh, so I, I think it's very positive. This is this will be a, a site that'll be maintained in the future. Mm. And, and people can visit it. And there will be a, a glaciated rock or two. So. If people want to go see what you've transplanted over there, are there any um, landmarks you can point them to? Oh, it, it, the, the top of the big dig starts at uh, University Avenue. So if you go to Habitat uh, and First Street and just walk down the street to Second Street, mm -hmm. you'll be seeing a, a, a portion which is rather interesting it takes water from a, a, a slight rise there and uh, it has cardinal flowers in it it has uh, uh, some of the grasses that are rather n nice uh, and just an array of plants that, that I, I give credit to the city for uh, organizing that and I give credit to the people who who are planting it who uh, know enough to, to put it there uh, it's it's uh, so then we're not at that site where you have to walk along a little uh, till you're behind Taylor uh, Glass Works. If you come out on Logan, you can probably uh, find your way around. Uh, part of the reason for sorting for sorting that out is we didn't know what sort of transportation we'd have, and if you have a tran uh, tandem truck. You have to know that it's very heavy, and if you take that sort of truck onto a, a lawn, you're likely to leave a two-inch tread for, for years ahead. Uh, so you need a road that is built for such transportation. Uh, we if, uh, probably fortunately didn't have a, to hire a, a tandem truck, so we have a little CRX which takes four or five boxes and uh, uh, we also have a, a Chrysler which will, uh, it's a Chrysler country style van which will take boxes too. These plants wilt fairly quickly so once you've trundled in and taken a spoonful of prairie and waddled back out and, and it's been put in boxes uh, it starts to wilt. So if you put it in your vehicle and you don't move it 
immediately uh, the plants are beginning to wilt. Uh, so people were opening the doors of the van to give it wind mm -hmm. to go past. Uh, but we got it as soon as we could. And some of the plants that we planted on Friday uh, were waving their wooden leg and, and, and being positive. Their leaves were shiny. And, and I have hopes that that will be very good. It's a lot of work for people. And, and so if you're out there, if you can give us help, we need it, especially on the planting side. It takes, it takes sometimes five times the time to plant as it does to salvage. And then you need water. So we need uh, buckets and we can go into the uh, boneyard and pick out the uh, water. And the water is not deep enough to provide you with uh, a, uh, a good puddle that you can put a four-gallon drum into and, and pull out water. So we have to ladle water into a bucket, and, and so that keeps things alive. We're also looking at, at uh, uh, rain and hoping that we get stuff in, and it's been predicted that we have rain. We, we had a trickle this morning. It was, a, it was only a spit, uh, uh, but it's been a cloudy day, which is... It was hot yesterday, but it, 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 we've got atmosphere that will make it possible, and it's kind of fun to do and people talk to each other so uh, we talk about solar panels and we talk about uh, genomes that's father and son uh, talking to us and uh, uh, we encounter people from the master naturalists who have a hmm. property at Sydney that come and, and uh, would like to do something with a driveway uh, we have uh, We, last night, about, oh, I would suspect about 10 o'clock, uh, T.J. Blakeman came by just to see. He's a city planner, and he's had a lot to do with trying to organise this and getting us a site where we can move to. And he was kind of interested to see what was going on, and then he was going over to the uh, Big Dig to, to see what we'd achieved so far, and and he's interested in putting up some signs. Uh, uh, do we put a string around this? Do we put uh, uh, some sort of uh, stronger fence that we've had at the Pocket Prairie? It's kind of intriguing to, to see the Pocket Prairie without a, a row of ropes to make sure that people keep on the pathway. Uh, so I was photographing this morning. I photographed uh, the serviceberry plants themselves, as the one that was dying was thrip and the ones that were still alive. I went to the conversation area. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. We had people to remove the conversation area seats. We had one uh, seat there that uh, has a back on it. It was bought by a, a volunteer, and it's amazing. It stayed there for, for many months of... Uh, well, on Friday night, I, I moved it out. Uh, it was ready to go. And by Saturday morning, it was back. <laughs> there, there are people who have been wandering by and, uh, and uh, 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 are disappointed to see this site go, which means that, that it's positive that it was there. And uh, so the seat went back. We brought it back again. And uh, it, it, we had the question will then be, do we do do we put a seat in the in the prairie uh, on the big dig? Will it will the same seat retain itself? Do we put an Osage orange seat, or does the Osage orange uh, seat that we have get removed and used for heat for uh, a homeless person in in, in winter time? It's, it's very difficult to to. There's a yin and yang about. The park districts and forest preserves and, and pocket prairies. Uh, they're attractive to a lot of different people and, uh, and you don't want to say no to this, but there's a, a limit to what you can do. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out whether we take a fairly sophisticated little 
conversation area to, to the, uh, the very site that we're at. Lots of thoughts. Uh, the plants are doing well. Uh, the uh, beard's tongue is out. The grapes are forming. There's, it's a wild grape. They're sour little creatures. So if you, if you eat them, uh, they're about a quarter of an inch big. You, 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 you react to that. Uh, the, uh, the blue stem is, is growing. The, the, pot, the lead plant is nice and it's got that gray sort of oxidized lead thing that gives it its name. Uh, uh, the little trail is still there. Uh, the roses are, are not blooming yet. They're single roses, simple roses. One is a, a, a tall uh, erect rose, which is called a sunshine rose. The other is a prairie rose uh, that is a runner, and you could pick it up and, and there'll be a run for 18 feet. Uh, there's uh, a compass plant, which we talk to all the time. It's an nth degree in drought resistance, and it's booming at the present time. It's rosin weed. A lot of these plants have a rosin and it helps them to survive. The dock is, is doing well. Uh, uh, and the birds are there. If we're lucky, we'll take, I've been taking video, we'll, we'll save some of the sound. But we usually have a cardinal out there that has two families a, a season. And, and we, the birds are going to miss what we've had. And we sometimes have goldfinches and other birds that's somehow find this uh, rather secret site. Uh, that we also have people who came Friday night that had heard our advertisements for uh, getting volunteers and they decided that they hadn't ever seen the Pocket Prairie and, and they arrived to see mm -hmm. the last time. And if you want to see it for the last time, you're welcome to come and you don't have to be a volunteer, just just get an idea of what the prairie is like. Just disregard that no trespassing sign on the, on the landing there. Yeah. <coughs> so um, there's tall coreopsis, which must be two feet high at the moment, and unfortunately it's succulent enough that it breaks off. So sometimes you have to, when you plant, you know that you've got leaves that are going to transpire water so uh, a kind thing to do is to to cut it down to about three inches, so the roots have time to to get into uh, action and bring back water to the leaves. It's just too much to expect uh, a plant that has lost its roots to to uh, come back quickly. So uh, pruning is a helpful if you know what you're doing. Uh, some plants probably don't appreciate it, and, and others do. We have to figure out whether we're going to take cup plant. Cup plants is kind of a, uh, it's a sylphium, and sylphiums are these tall plants that get to be eight and ten feet tall, and, uh, dark and compass plant. But one of their tribe is, is a cup plant, and it's intriguing because it, it has this cup, the leaves well together and make a little cup around the stem. And, but it's just a little on the aggressive side. Uh, it's it's uh, it's okay. It, you can get rid of it, and I think we will take it. But uh, we, we'll just uh, warn the people who are maintaining it to watch it because it, it can be aggressive. <laughs> Even our own prairie plants uh, can be aggressive. We don't usually encourage a lot of sunflowers because they can be aggressive, and they know how to spread. If you have a, a sawtooth sunflower that might be up to 18 feet tall sometimes, it says they really uh, grow well. Well, that creature falls over and it, it gradually walks. So it, it grows again where it walks and then it does the same the next year and, and, and it can spread. So we, we are cautious, especially when I'm uh, planting urban gardens I, I don't give them, I've learned not to give people 
uh, a lot of sunflowers because they take over and they're aggressive enough that they don't die. Uh, the more mild-mannered prairie plants. So if you have sunflowers, uh, watch them. Uh, we have uh, the mints. Uh, bee balm is just a wonderful flower for uh, for um, bee, uh, bees of all type, but especially for bumblebees. Uh, and they're hardy, and you can tell them if you if you dug up a plant and you're not sure what it is, you feel its stem and it's, it's, uh, it's uh, a cross section is a square and it has an engineering uh, design. Uh, sometimes we leave the last year's <coughs> fruiting bodies up just so people can see what a monada or bee bomb or uh, Bergamot is several different names for the same plant. But, uh, it's so, uh, well, it, it would be very helpful if some of you would come and help. If you want to drive the, the hi-ho, that's, that's an experience. It's like playing in a, in a, in a sand pit with a toy toy machine, mm. it's a, a responsible machine, but, uh, but then we need to plant, and so we need you over on the, uh, uh, over on the uh, big dig, uh, putting in plants, and you talk to each other, and you, you share this, this interest. It might be that you get convinced to put a, a solar panels on, on, on your roof because you're talking to each other. You, hmm. So you may come from Minnesota, you find out who's coming from where and, and what their interest is and why. And, and I think this has a twink twinkle in the eye for the people who uh, uh, to maintain this in the future. You have to work with workmen who are uh, in genuine uh, responsibility, f feel that they, they have to mow weeds, but if you have a little prairie pot, pot and it has a weed or two and you go in with a mower to, to mow that weed, then the mower creates the weeds of mowing, mm. uh, the, the, the weeds that have rosettes and they love to be mown, like chicory uh, and, and so gradually you're prairie gets to be smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller mm. until it disappears completely. So, so there need to be people to explain that this is a prairie plot and please if you're going to weed it you have to know your weeds and pull them out and when you take out a weed just don't take out the weed. You, put your, you, you take your heel and you make that soil hard because the weed likes it soft and the, and the prairie likes it mm -hmm. hard. Right. Uh, and that means that somebody has to know their f weeds and, and interestingly they also have to know their prairie plants. So the people that are working there now have a n knowledge of prairie plants they probably didn't have two days ago. Uh, uh, so please see if you can help us. We uh, that have a deadline by Monday then heavier equipment will come in and we'll lose what we don't get out. Uh, uh, we hope that won't be the case, but we've made a very genuine effort to indicate that we're, we're getting out of there and uh, uh, we appreciate what's happening with the business development. We hope it will succeed in, in uh, many ways. Uh, it's taking an older building in, in uh, Market Street and developing it and not uh, destroying it. So we also talking to the building next door, which is behind the Pocket Prairie, because it in itself is interesting. So just in, during the week, there has to be some consideration of electricity. So there has to be a, a, a transformer box somewhere, and sometimes those transformer boxes are eight feet by 10 feet, because you can't have a, a transformer too close to the, to the earth, you might just earth out. 
So there's a cooperation between the building to the north and the building to the south. And just to watch these people working on these sorts of situations is, is an education. Uh, I, I take photographs and uh, we, we, we're looking seriously at doing some blogs because uh, when I talk to you and, and go across various uh, domains, it, uh, it, it, it's not as simple and straightforward as a blog. So we're getting the messages, a blog with the pictures, uh, and the pictures in, in the case of a blog need to be more along the lines of, of a series. Uh, if you're uh, doing what our program it do, does, we can only put in a, a, a occasional picture here and there, but uh, sometimes the, the pictures are very important and you, uh, we're not really versed with uh, the details of which sort of blog and why and how uh, to, to get this underway, but we'll learn. We also have to learn about our uh, database. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, uh, over a thousand names of people who w could work with us, and we we haven't been. We, we're not in a position where we can go and say these ten people could be proselytized right now. Uh, so we've had a, a suggestion this week uh, have the, uh, to to use a thing called. Uh, Mass Chimp. It's a program that's designed to help you uh, work with your database. So we need people who who that's do that sort of thing. I'm looking at my time here. Two minutes. Two minutes. So uh, yes. So there's there's a lot of uh, just to to do this. We have had six weeks of notice, but six weeks of notice. If you're going to work with uh, people that are going to help you and they belong to organizations, it's going to take two months of meeting to to sort it out. And if there's a debate about whether you're going to get help or not get help, then uh, that might take two months of a meeting. Uh, so these things don't happen qu quickly. You might note that the, the Kickapoo Trail took 20 years to get into action. Uh, we don't hope to have that sort of delay. But it, 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 things don't happen quickly, so don't get disappointed if things don't happen immediately. Uh, David's got a, a, a note in front of him, and it's about the Amazon. So why don't you say something about it? I'll, I'll close out, I think. Uh, this is Dave Monk, your Prairie Monk, WEFT, Sarah Payne. Please uh, come and help us if you can. We'll be there uh, probably until 8 o'clock. And Dave on the board, as always, the views and opinions expressed are solely those of the speakers and no one else.